Today, we are going to talk about Base64. Base64 is a great standard for encoding. Again, this is encoding, not encrypting, because anybody who sees Base64 can decode it. There's no password, they just can just decode it. But it's very, very useful. And basically what it comes down to is you can give it any information and it will convert it, encode it, as typeable characters on a keyboard. This is great if you can only send messages as text, you can encode, again, any binary files, so like uh, images, JPEGs, PNGs, videos, MP4s, uh, AVIs, MOVs, uh, you can encode uh, PDFs, Word documents, MP3s, anything. Also, just regular text. And, you know, your file size might go up a little bit with certain things like images and video files because those are already compressed and now you're encoding it so it gets a little bit larger. But it allows you to, again, have things as plain text. And this is something you interact with all the time, but you may not realize it. We all do email, right? In email, if you ever got an attachment that wasn't just a text file, it is going to be base64 encoded, right? If you were to go to whatever you use for your email, Outlook or Gmail or Mutt, you can look at, there's an option somewhere, different in different programs, to look at the raw data of that text, which give you all the header information on what servers it bounced off and all that stuff. But the attachments, you will say, this is attachment, it's this type of file, and then it will give you a whole bunch of what may look like garbledy gook to a lot of people, but it's it's ba base 64 characters, it's typable characters. And one of the things you'll see, uh, I don't know exactly how the standard works, but lots of times the messages end with a equal equal sign. Uh, so that's right away when I say I go, oh, it's base 64. It's also very useful. Again, anytime you need to send plain text, but in a web browser, right? Uh, I can link images. So if I have a web page with images on it, usually you're going to link to an external image, but I can embed an image right in the web page using base64 to encode, or, or really any type of file, and I don't need more than one file. So if you just wanted to have a document that was an HTML that didn't reach out to anything external, you could encode all your files as base64 and put them in it. Let, let's just get into it. I've, I've talked enough. So base64 is going to be installed on all your Linux machines by default, okay? So again, we're going to, going to use the example of uh, this is my message, so that prints out the message. I'm going to pipe that into base64, and there is a base32, and I think there might be a base128. Base64 seems to be what's used most places. We're going to run that, and again, see how it ends in equal equal? That is a sign that this is base64. Even if it's like five pages of text, it will end in equal equal. I've seen sometimes where it's not. I'm not really sure why or not, but that's just a sign. If you see Something looks like a whole bunch of just random letters and it ends with equal equal. Go, oh, that's base64. So how do we decode that? Well, you just take that message. You say echo, so I can echo. Again, that would just show that information. But I'm going to put it back into base64. And this time I'm going to say dash D for decode, not decrypt. Because again, this is not encryption. This is encoding. And now it says this is my message. In the last uh, video, we talked about QR codes. If I list out my files here, I still have the QR code in here. So. This is a PNG file, right? If I was to try to display what's in that file as if it was text, it would look like this, right? It, that's binary information. We have some looks like typable stuff here, but some weird characters. And a lot of this looks like empty space, but it's actually a bunch of different stuff. You can look at it in hex editor, but it's not plain text. You can't just send that as a text message, right? It would lose stuff and you wouldn't be able to decode it. But I could just say base64 and give it that file and look, this is that image. It didn't end in the equal equal. I, like I said, it doesn't always do that. This is a common thing. Maybe someone can elaborate on that in the comments. But I can send this to somebody as a text message or any type of text message, like an SMS message or an email or however you want. Any way you can, you can type text out, you can send this and then they can take this and they can decode it. Now, uh, Another option, this show it breaks it up line by line, which would be nice, like because text messages are limited in size, right? I could break it up and send each message individually. As long as the person keeps them in order, they can put them back together and decode them. Uh, but you could also say dash W to give a line width. And if you say zero, it puts it all on one line. So this is going to be the same exact thing. Again, this is encoding, so it's going to give the same exact information every single time for the same thing. So as long as I'm passing it the same message or the same file, the output's gonna be the same. This is just getting rid of the line breaks, okay? 
So yeah, that's that's base 64 in a nutshell. And again, it's just encoding, not encrypting, but you could encrypt something. Well, like we talked about in our first video with OpenSSL, it has an option where it makes it base 64 for you already, uh, but you could encode anything. So even if you had an encrypted file that wasn't already base 64, you could base 64 encode it, and then someone could decode that and then decrypt it. And you could have these layers of messages in there. As long as someone knows the proper order and any passwords that are required, they could get your message. So yeah. That's base 64. Again, super useful. If you can type a message to somebody, you can send them any type of information, obviously very slow, like, right? I said you can encode an MP4, like a movie like this, but an MP4 already, like let's say you had a full movie that was really compressed. Let's say it's, and you get a, a full movie at a gig in size. When you base 64 encode it, it's gonna end up being bigger than, than a gig. And to type out a gig worth of information is, is not gonna happen. But be aware that you could do that theoretically. So thanks for watching. I hope you continue watching this series. And I hope that you have a great day.